Come on, don't sit down and act like the frozen chosen. Give God some praise. Well, he's been with you all your life.
We will be emotionally whole, emotionally perfect, and spiritually perfect. But because we don't want to feel when God is shaping us, how many of you know, you know that God is shaping you daily? We want to do what we want to do. We are persistent in where we want to be, what we want to do, and how we want to do it. Sometimes we want what we want badly. You see, what we forget is self is the basis of every relationship that you and I will be in. You cannot be in any relationship without you being present. Because in order to have a relationship with you, I've got to have a relationship with myself. The problem is that I've been blaming everyone else for what's wrong with me. We blame the church. We blame our spouses. We blame our children. We blame our parents for what's wrong with you and me. We, sit, we like to sit in the pews and call it transformation. We have information, and then we want to twist it to transformation. Transformation is not brought about by simply doing and getting good check marks or applying external makeup. It's a life process within. God does not change our situation. He wants to change our mind. This is why in Ephesians 4.17, Paul warns us not to walk as the unconverted does, being wrapped in worldly things and stuff that's not of God, because they are ignorant of the things of God. Therefore, they have removed themselves from God through their blindness and hardness of their heart. They gave way to lust of sin, Paul was talking about, practicing uncleanness, and having no bounds. But we as Christians have learned Christ and have been saved from darkness and defilement. Therefore, we should not be looking or acting like the world. Christ is the lesson. He's the teacher because the truth is only found in him. All that you have learned of him must be applied daily. Simply put, y'all, the old you has to go. That corruptible representative of you has to go. It is not enough just to stop doing evil and wrong, but we must learn to do well by putting on the new man, which is done by God's regenerating grace, which helps us to lead a life of righteousness and holiness. And this is what Christianity requires. We like to talk about the armor of God in Ephesians 6 as if the only piece that is relevant to us is the helmet of salvation. But we don't talk about the breastplate of righteousness, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, lawns girded with truth, shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit. We've conditioned ourselves to one piece, the helmet of salvation. Now that I met God, I found out that it requires, he requires certain behaviors from me. You have to suffer yourself to be humble. God uses the negative in our lives to make us better. We think that God is somehow punishing us, but he uses every negative situation to make us better. Just like the conversation I was having with my mother, anything that came and hit you, it had to pass by God. And God is a restorer of everything. That's why we have to let God handle us. Because sometimes we want to come out of situations only to go back in. We ask God to take the drugs away, the alcohol, the pornography, the uncleanness, and as soon as we think we got it all together, we go back in. That's not what God wants for us. But the good thing about God, while he's working on you and while he's working on me, he covers us. He covers us. He's a wonderful God. Sometimes we have hard times emotionally. 
psychologically. We can be in a dry place spiritually because everyone is going through something. I don't care who you are. We are all going through something. I'm talking about feeling spiritually bankrupt. And we live in our dysfunctional comfort. What I mean to say, saints, is sometimes we can be in a dysfunctional situation for a long time till it becomes our new norm. And we're happy there. But God will disrupt your comfort. Because anytime you are faced with yourself, you have to look at yourself. Your mind is open up for inspection when we look at ourselves. But I tell you what, if you change your mind, you can change your space. And then when these things happen, you stop coming to church for another sermon and leaving the same way. We will be so advantageous to fortitude the gospel message. Through the course of the year, your heart will decline and lean towards old habits. Just because we're here on New Year's Eve does not mean that there's some magical one, one that's going to be waived. Your heart will lean towards old habits and tricks. Doubts and discouraging thoughts will have us in a downward spiral. But God said, I hate the condition of double mindedness You have to make a decision about what you hate and get in agreement with God. Sometimes we love things that are destroying us. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that when I was in the world, everything I did I didn't like, because that would be the biggest lie. Some things I liked I was doing. I was pretty mad when God said I had to give it up. <laughs> and I asked God, are you sure? Can I just keep this over here? But God is real plain about what he tells us to give up. Because I didn't want to give up everything. I liked some stuff I was doing. You have to know where to go when the attack starts. Thank you will be attacked. You're going to be attacked on a greater level this year. Because he, the devil is going to be mad that you made it over into 2019. So he's coming for you. He don't like you. He is your enemy. He wants to take you back to the old you. But you cannot run away from God when the attack comes. You run to God. We have to know what is our hiding place. Sometimes our hiding place is food. We overeat. Sometimes our hiding place is pornography, adultery, drugs, and alcohol. What's yours? Is it God? Is that your hiding place? Psalms 119 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High should abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Is that where you go? If it isn't, then that's where we should go. We can hide under the shadow of the Almighty. God has a good and perfect plan for your life and mine. He wants us to be transformed people with renewed minds, living to honor and obey Him. Because He wants the best for us. This is why He gave His Son to make this new life we should joyfully give ourselves as living sacrifices for his service. When we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we were regenerated and we became children of God. We was no longer at enmity with God. We stay in a process of transformation by ingesting Christ as our spiritual food, growing in him daily. And see, the thing of it is, see, the church, a lot of times, don't tell people that come to Christ the truth. They have a misconception that when I come up and accept Christ, everything is going to be woof, there it is. Transformation is a process. And when we don't think that we're making progress, we give up. During transformation and the process, we go from glory to glory. Because Jesus meets each one of us 
our need and grace and mercy. You see, a lot of times we like to think that the miracle is in making it from one year to the next year. But I come to tell you the miracle is not in making it one year to the next. It's how you made it from one year to the next. Who was with you? We know that from our learning that the word became flesh. That means it was voluntary on his part. He didn't have to do it. He set up a situation for us to have revelation. But we want resurrection without crucifixion. We don't want to go through nothing. We want everything easy. Had the tools. We want somebody to study for us. Give us the information. We'd rather call somebody and ask them for a description and open up our own Bible. We want someone to give us the answer. But the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He didn't put a sign on Bishop's back. He didn't put a sign on my back or any of the other clergy members. He's talking about each one of us to study. Don't just allow anything to come into your mind. God has given us all editing software in our spirit and discernment, and he's given us his word to guide us through. We cannot let our pride, ignorance, deception keep us from being obedient to God. Hebrew 4.12 tells us that God knows each one individually. He knows the nasty gut of snipes that's in each one of us. Each one of us. He knows my nastiness and my gut of snipes. Each one of us he knows individually, so we can't hide. The truth of the matter is, saints, we cannot transform ourselves, but we can be transformed. There's nothing you can do to transform yourself, but you can be transformed. And we do this by studying and obeying God's word, praising and thanking him, prayer and meditation on the word and by sharing him with others. Second Corinthians ten five tells us that we must take captive, captive, put in under arrest every unwholesome thought and yield it to Christ. But the problem is we meditate on unwholesome thoughts until we go out there and do it. And then we say, Oops, what did I do? Or did I do that? Yes you did. You didn't take that thought captive. You and I have a choice. We have a choice. You can allow or you can honestly admit them to God. You can honestly go to him because transformation is the bookend of repentance. And we need to stop playing with what we have. We should be empowered by our thoughts and not paralyzed by them. We need to stop fixing up the house on the outside and start working on the stuff on the inside and allowing God to do surgery in our heart because we all carry stuff from childhood, from broken marriages, from bad relationships, and what we do is we come here on New Year's Eve and we take them right over into the old years. This book, saying is what will guide you. Jesus Christ is your guide. This is why when we read Psalms 23, it says he leaves. He made it. But we don't pay attention to that. The only time we read Psalms 23 is when we at funeral. But we have to put that in our heart. And stop going against what God has called us to do. He's called you for a purpose. Not to come here and sit in the pews and look at each other. And look so we look like the frozen chosen. Every one of us in here has a gift. And in 2019, we should be exercising the gift. Amen. Amen. To edify the body. Amen. Because let me help y'all with something. Stagnant water stinks. It stinks bad. God is calling us up to a higher dimension in 2019. 
We should not, in 2020, if we're here, we should not be doing, we should be doing better than they were doing in 2019. But we stay stuck. Amen? Amen. Transformation. And I want you to leave here this evening with that word on your heart and in your mind. Transformation is a process. Don't get discouraged when things doesn't happen. Keep pressing toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm through. Hallelujah.
the messenger. Amen. Amen. We certainly, we certainly want to wish everyone a happy and a prosperous and healthy New Year. Amen. Amen. You know they say that uh, sixty is the new forty, <laughs> but I want to tell you tonight that nine o'clock is the new midnight. <laughs> You with me? I'm done. I don't sit late too much. No Amen. I just wanted to say a few things and then we're going to go downstairs and we call it the week watching station. It's where you get to watch your week go up. Well, we're going to have a communion. All right. See, I'm done. Huh? Y'all got to forgive me. But there's, there's something that's been troubling me for quite some time, and she touched on it in her message, and was troubling me, and I need y'all to listen to this. What's been troubling me for quite some time is that I've come to realize that if you are truly saved, you have to have the Holy Ghost. You can't be saved without it. Are you with me? Now, with the Holy Ghost comes a gift. No, there's no two ways about it. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got a gift. Amen. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, then obviously you won't have a gift. But if you're saved and you're really saved, you have a gift. It's a package deal. You can't make a separation. Are you with me? But somehow, the church has been hoodwinked, bamboozled, Amen. to the place where we don't seem to operate in our gift. I, I don't get it. How can you come to church Sunday after Sunday? And that's it. You leave here, you're finished with God. Are you with me? The only time you think about God again is when you come back next Sunday. Hopefully. Here's my problem. We can't continue to function that way. There's something very seriously wrong with the way the church conducts itself now. now I'm not talking about just Bethany, I'm talking about universally. This is what I see. So many saints of God. Every day, the, the church, they shout the house down. They, 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 the loudest praises in the church. That's fine. The Bible says, let everything that has breath give them praise. That's fine. But when the praise is over, there's work to do. And my problem is, is that it just doesn't seem to be happening. I don't understand. So, this coming new year, I would like for you to seriously, seriously lay before the Lord. Find out. Let, let's find your gift and you've got work to do. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but this world is in serious trouble. Amen. And I think it's largely because the saints are not doing their job. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And we've said it before to our visitors, so don't, you know... Y'all got to get used to Bethany. We kind of raw here. We just tell it like it is. But we got a lot of punk Christians. Punks. Afraid to, to tell a dying world that you need Jesus. And not be afraid of what you're going to say. How they going to react. Or what you, I don't care what you say. I did my job. I'm telling you, you need Jesus. And I'm saying that we really need to wake up. We got we to gotta get past that. And the other thing, so we, just so we clear, you have a gift. If you're not operating in it, you've been hoodwinked. You've been bamboozled. I don't care what church you go to. I don't care. Listen, you are God to say nobody to sit here and warm a bench and look at me. Now I know you want to look at me. <laughs> no. But back up. But the point is, that's not why, that isn't why God saved you. You have something to do. There is a unique gifting and ability that every single person under the sound of my voice has. You have it. But you've been tripping to think that you don't. And the devil's been so successful with that trick. I'm telling you. That he has so many of us just, we just, we la la la. We have work to do. You have to find that work. 
I don't care how old you are, I don't care how young you are, if you say you got the Holy Ghost, you got a gift. Yes. And you need to be working. If you're not working, it's just that you're wrong. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Now, the other thing, I need you to understand. I'm going to preach a preach. I don't want to preach, but the other thing I need you to understand is that there's a lot of insane folk in the house. And why I'm saying that is because somebody defined insanity as doing the same thing over and over, but then expecting to get a different result. We're out of our minds. If you think we can continue to do exactly what we did in 2018, that we carry it over to 2019, but it's going to be different results. It's not going to happen. we got to change. We have to do some things differently. And I don't know what I don't know what it takes for us to get there. I, I really don't understand. And that is not just in the your church life, in every aspect, in every part of your life. You can't do the same thing. If you're not happy with something, if something's not going the way you want it to be, you can't keep doing what you've been doing all the time, all the while. Are you with me? If you got trouble in your marriage, trouble in your home, well, look, you can't continue to do the same things over and over that got you to the place where you got trouble. You can't keep doing it. You got to do something different. Change, change. You have to make some changes. You want different results? Do some different things. Not hard to understand, right? All right. God bless you. Uh, that's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spare y'all. But this is what we really need to focus on. We need to focus on doing what pleases God based on our gifting. Everyone has them. You're not saved just to sit here and warm a pew. That's, the devil's a liar. Stink your water. You're absolutely right. You need to be on your J-O-B. Find that. And when you find that, you work at it as if it was the last thing on earth you were going to do. Are y'all with me? You know, we, we, we go to church service after service, and, you know, we, we, we have a good time in God, but no, no, nothing really change. We don't become better for the sake of the kingdom. We felt good. We sweated out some clothes, and, and, and you know, we heard a word, but we don't, nothing changes time to snap out of that. We got to do better. Amen? All right, let me get out of the way. We, uh, I believe we're going to have our communion service. Is that correct? All right. We are ready to, are we going to dismiss from here? You want me to do it? Or? All right, let's stand. All right. Now, the, the other thing, too, that, you know, may not be important to you, a big thing, but I, I wanna, what I try to do is I always try to teach the best I can, not by what I say, but what I do. Now, I'm supposed to be the pastor and the bishop, but I still ask for permission to do things because there's a protocol, there's an order for this particular service. Just because I'm the pastor and the bishop doesn't mean I violate the protocol. Are you with me? I'm teaching you something. Doesn't matter who you are, you still you follow protocol. Little lessons, just little things that go a long way. You'll never be a good leader until you learn to be a good follower. Are y'all with me? Amen. Are we ready to be dismissed? Now, we're going into our communion service. Uh, this is the first communion that we have for the new year. And uh, you are all welcome to partake. But we, we ask two things, the two prerequisites. One, that you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. And two, that you have been baptized. Those are the only two prerequisites. If you meet those two, you're welcome to partake in the communion with us. If you do not, you can feel free to go ahead downstairs. We'll be down there in a little while. Trust me, we're hungry. And uh, we'll be down there in a little while to join you. So, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, 
And if you have been baptized, you're welcome to partake in the communion with us. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, and if you have not been baptized, please do not, please do not partake of the communion. Are we clear? All right, God bless you. All right, let's look to the Lord. Our Father, my God, we come now with bowed heads and humble hearts. Oh God, we thank you now for this day. We thank you for this new year that you've allowed us to see. Well, God, we look to the hills now from which comes our help. We pray, God, you continue to give us your guidance and direction for this new year. Have your way in our lives right now. Now, God, as we dismiss from this service, but never your presence. We ask that you continue to bless and keep each and every one of us. Oh God, as we leave tonight, we pray for traveling mercies for those traveling. Oh God, we pray every home be found in perfect peace. These and all blessings we ask now. In Jesus' name we pray. And the redeemed said amen. 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 And amen.